right, so I wanted to do a video on the gear that I bring uh, when I go kayak fishing or even on my new uh, Bass Raider bass boat. Um, it doesn't change very much between the two, but I thought I'd give you kind of just like a little bit of a rundown. So first of all, um, everything here on this table is basically what I bring. Uh, so first of all, here we are. This is my um, digital scale. I was using a um, you know non-digital scale previously, but it just wasn't that accurate. And this one's pretty good. Uh, plus, it can clip easily to the boat and stuff. Obviously, scissors. Um, I have pliers too. I don't know where they are. I think they're in my car. All right. So getting into my tackle boxes. Um, so first of all, I have two uh, terminal tackle boxes. Um, and this first one is basically we have treble hooks. You know, all different sizes of treble hooks. Um, and then a bunch of other things. But first of all, I like to fish a lot of crankbaits. So I'm always going through treble hooks. I'm always banging them on things, you know, getting them stuck in wood, uh, you know, bouncing stuff off rocks. So my treble hooks either get bent or um, they just get worn out. Uh, so I always keep um, extra treble hooks in all different sizes so I can switch them out on the fly. Uh, so then I have some, you know, just basically rubber bands, and I, you, you know, you can use the rubber bands for things like securing a wacky rig. Um, and then we have some beads, and it's funny, I just got these beads at the at the dollar store, um, and they're just like little letters or whatever. But I use those for Carolina rigs. And um, let's see, and then I got some bobber stoppers. These are really important. And I got these for about two bucks or so at Bass Pro Shop. And they're really, really easy to use. I like these rubber versions versus the, the tie-in versions. I think these work a little better. Um, and I use, obviously I use bobber stoppers for, look at Val. I'm a crazy dog. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> so I use the bobber stoppers for, you know, uh, securing weights, uh, you know, bullet weights when I'm, you know, pitching into heavy cover and stuff. Oh, and then I forgot these. Uh, these are just a different small, smaller hooks. I have some circle hooks for, you know, wacky rigging. I got some, you know, just small bait holder hooks and whatnot. All right. Yeah. All right, so here is terminal tackle box number two. Um, this is the one I'm, I'm generally digging into the most when I'm going out there. It's like my worm hooks and whatnot. But uh, let's see. Here we have, you know, starting over here, we have um, a bunch of, you know, snap swivels, which I, I really like snap swivels, especially the really small ones like this. If I'm one on a kayak, because sometimes it's hard to retie certain things on a kayak, and two, if I'm using certain crankbaits, because I like the way. Uh, Snap swivels kind of allow the crankbaits to move. Uh, yeah, so then I have some, you know, jig heads that I, I like to I like to throw these kind of uh, things on, you know, flukes or just basic swim baits and stuff like that. Uh, and then I have all different kinds. You know, I have I have football jig style here, and uh, then I have nice small ones. And basically, oh yeah, so here's an example of a nice, uh, you know, compact small one. And I like to use these for when I'm throwing a Ned rig. And I'll show, you know, I'll show you later how I how I set up a Ned rig. But I also like to throw this, I mean it's smaller, smaller profile, and um and I you know I use a smaller soft plastic uh, when I'm throwing it. And it works well in cold water or just times when the bite is really slow and I can't really get anything. But uh yeah, it's, it's really useful for uh, smaller baits. All right, so going up here, we got our straight, you know, our regular straight shank worm, worm hooks. Um, and I like to throw, and here we go, this is an example of my favorite, my favorite worms here. Um, these are the yum dingers. This is the green pumpkin, uh, but then I also use black. 
So I use the worm hooks basically when it's a small profile, like when I'm throwing a yum dinger worm, uh, when it's kind of a smaller, a smaller, thinner bait. Uh, okay, and then I got more worm hooks here. I got some bullet sinkers here, all different sizes, and I use bullet sinkers for when I'm pegging baits. Um, you know, uh, like I showed you before, I use those those uh, those bobber stoppers to peg um, to peg the bullet sinker down especially when I'm using something to, to kind of flip into heavy cover. Um, okay, what else? We got shaky heads. So I like these. Um, I don't use shaky heads all that often. I want to try them more, um, you know, when I get the chance. But as you can see, basic shaky head with the screw on bait here. And then I, I use, uh, I forget the name of the worm, but it's some kind of trick worm. And what else? Then we got our extra wide gap hooks. So I like to use the extra wide gaps for, like I said, when I'm throwing into heavy cover or when I'm using thicker baits, like a crawfish looking bait with like a thicker body. And then I always, well generally, I always peg it. All right, what else do we have? We got some, there's some weights here that I use for drop shotting. Uh, I have all different sizes. Uh, like I said, the bullet singers. Oh, and then I have my hook sharpener. And I like to keep this in here, especially like I said, I, I wear out hooks, um, treble hooks especially, uh, on my crankbaits. So if, you know, they're not too far gone, I always like to sharpen them. And it's a really simple process, but yeah, this is it. Alrighty. Alright, so moving on to my top water box. Um, here is everything from frogs to poppers to um, you know walking baits. So first of all, I got my frogs up here. I love my hollybot, hollow body frogs. Whoop. Drop one, and uh, this is kind of my go-to. Um, I use this. You can tell it's all beat up, but I like to use this when the um, you know when there's a lot of mats and stuff like that. All right, say hi to Jake. Hi, Jake. There's our other little buddy there. Um, yeah, but these are really nice, uh, really simple to use. You know, you can either walk them or, like I said, throw them on mats. Uh, so when the mats are really thick, I like to turn to this one. So I filled this with BBs, um, basically from, you know, just a split shot. And it just sits heavier on the mats, so it kind of makes more of an indentation uh, when you're reeling it in. And I, I, I think the fish can see it a little better when they're looking up. Um, yeah, it's an example of a couple of frogs, but obviously I have all different kinds of hollow body frogs, which I really like. You know, the popper versions. Um, yeah. Oh, and then here's a some. Th this is these are cool. These are kind of a hybrid between, uh, you know, a swimming frog and a hollow body. Um, so I really like this one, and um, and it's another scum frog. Same, you know, same brand as as these. Which scum frog is the the, the frogs I really like to use. But this is cool. It's kind of a mix between a soft plastic frog, as you can see by the kickers here, and a hollow body. So it gives you that nice kicking paddle action, but it also has the you know the buoyancy and the, the kind of the solid, the more solid body of the hollow body. All right. Now, what else we got? We got some you know regular standard poppers here. More poppers. Uh, let's see, bigger poppers. All right, what else do we have? So next we have our buzz baits. Um, you know, I have all different sizes, different colors. I don't use buzz baits all that often, but it's always good to have some with you. Um, and then my walking baits. I don't use walking baits all that often either, but um, it is definitely very effective certain times of year. And this one is especially cool. This little Zara puppy. Um, it's, it's basically a mini Zara spook, and I've actually had some luck with this guy. I really like it. Um, I'm going to get another, a regular Zara spook uh, when I can. Now, uh, what else? I got some, I got a buzz plug, I got a jitterbug. Um, all right, and then I got some prop baits here. This is a Rebel prop bait. Uh, I got a Crazy Shad prop bait. And then, of course, I have a... Whopper plopper here. Um, I love the whopper plopper. It's just really fun to throw. 
All right, now moving on to one of my favorite tackle boxes is my crankbait box. And I love throwing crankbaits. Um, a lot of the videos I make and I put up, I mean, half the time it's, you know, I'm catching stuff on crankbaits. Um, so I have everything from, you know, smaller bomber crankbaits, which are great um, for catching smaller fish or just in tougher, you know, tougher fishing times. Uh, you know, going up, I have a lot of bomber, kind of standard. Uh, this is the bomber A, a square A, sorry. Um, crankbaits, they're all different colors and I have all different styles here. Um, but these, so this size is kind of my go-to. Um, I love, actually found both of these. Um, both were in trees, you know, at my favorite ponds. Um, and I really like this one. I caught a ton of fish this year on this guy. And it's, you know, I think it works really well because uh, there's tons of bluegill in the waters where I fish, and it kind of has a, you know, a darker orangey, you know, kind of blue bluegill kind of pattern to it. Um, and I love it. It just deflects really well. Unfortunately, I, I chipped it right here from banging it off too many rocks. But yeah, it deflects really well, and uh, I've caught tons of fish on this. And so I, I put new treble hooks on it, but it's kind of weird. So I put a large, a bigger treble hook on the back. I was just trying things out. And for some reason, it works really well. I don't know why, um, but it catches fish. All right, so then I have some other, you know, square bill crankbaits. Uh, and then I have, whoop, I'm all tangled up here. And then I have my Rapala, uh, these, these are all the, the Rapala Shad Wraps. I have all different sizes of these. Um, they work pretty well. You know, I don't use these as often as standard crankbaits, but they do work well. Uh, then I have like a scatter wrap, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then this guy, and I wish I remembered the name of this lure, but uh, it's a crankbait obviously, but it, uh, it's a certain brand. Anyway, I got it in, in the uh, Lucky Tackle box, and it is awesome. It deflects pretty well. Um, I've caught tons of fish on it. I mean, big fish too that were going after this guy, which is funny because it's a really small small crankbait. There's something about it just works really well. I mean it really has a wacky way that it swims. The only thing though if you crank it too fast it does tend to pop out of the water pretty easily. But uh, yeah it's a cool little bait. Alright then I have kind of the moderate diving crankbaits. Oh yeah so just to give you a, kind of a more of a background I always write the number um, of the depth that the crankbaits can can swim to on the bottom of them. For instance, this is five to seven, okay? And some of these, like this guy is like zero to zero to three. I think it's a little wearing off, but. All right, now going with the guys with the bigger bills here. Um, this is a six to eight, it swims to, you know, six to eight feet. Um, it obviously, that all depends on the line you're throwing as well, but we can get into that later. And I have all different, you know, styles of that. Uh, different brands and whatnot, but a few different colors that can, you know, swim to that range. Alrighty, now we got some Rapala jointed, I forget what these are called exactly. These are pretty cool. So I actually got all these, <laughs> these baits in this tackle box that I bought at a junk shop. And, uh, you know, I got the whole box for like 30 bucks that had hundreds of baits and lures and stuff in there. Anyway, um, these are cool. Obviously, I replaced the treble hooks on them, but they work pretty well. Little swimming baits. Some of them float, some of them sink. Um, but they're pretty cool. I don't use them that often, but they are, you know, kind of crankbait s. So I put it in a crankbait box. Uh, another bait that I got in that uh, in that tackle box I bought at the thrift shop was this. Okay, were these um, uh, Rapala countdowns? Which are kind of cool, you know. I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't throw these very often, but they are pretty neat to have. And I replaced the uh, treble hooks on them, and so they're good to go now. All right, so now moving on to one of my favorites, which is the lipless crankbait. And here is my favorite of all. As you can tell, this thing is just beat to hell. Um, this is a 
Strike King KVD um, lipless crankbait, kind of like the red eye shad version. Uh, except this one doesn't actually have a red eye. But um, anyway, this thing I've lost probably three times, four times, but I always go in and recover it because I like it that much. <laughs> um, I actually have to replace the hooks on it right now. But yeah, I love this 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 uh, lipless crankbait. I have a few versions of this. I also have a red one, and I'm looking to get a few other colors. Um, and then here is the old school rattle trap. So here's the old school rattle trap. You know, everyone knows about the rattle trap, but uh, there are there, there is a pretty big difference uh, between these two baits. So I, this one's a little heavier, first of all. And then I noticed that when I stop reeling this one in, it kind of nose dives and goes down, which is okay in some circumstances. But uh, this one, I noticed that the red eye shads. Um, they kind of flutter. So you stop reeling them, they kind of have a flutter action as they're going down. Um, and I really like that. And I noticed that in cold weather, when the, in the bite's kind of slow, this really works because you can, you can reel, you can reel it in slower, you, you know, um, and you can just do stop, and then you can just stop it completely, and then you still have a really good action to it. Um, all right, like I said, I have all different versions of the rattle trap. You know, this is a, the red one here. This is a, a bomber version, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, you know, some knockoffs. This one was, you know, this one was from uh, like a Bass Pro, a Bass Pro Shop version. Uh, and then more knockoffs here. You know. All right, and now my deep diving crankbaits. So. These are pretty neat, just because they're massive. <laughs> but um, this is a Jenko. Uh, I wouldn't have bought this if I just went out and I was going to get crankbaits, but this came in my Lucky Tackle box. And it's really cool. Um, this can go to like 25 feet maximum. So it's really deep. And I actually used it in, um, in um, a tournament I did last year because, you know, I went there not really knowing mu much about the water and I was surprised to find that there were spots of this little pond that were, you know, 25, 30 feet deep. So this, you know, actually came to use back then. Um, the one negative side to a crankbait this big and, and a crankbait that dives this deep is that it has a ton of drag. So uh, it gets actually pretty tiring when you're trying to crank it up from 25 feet, you know. Um, but anyway, it's a cool bait. Uh, then I have kind of a smaller, but still relatively deep dive, and this goes to like 12 feet, and this is a bait ball, as I call it, as you can see, the multiple fish in the profile here. Um, it's a live target bait, you know, made by live target, and this one's cool, it has a really nice uh, rattle to it, it's really heavy, and I like this too, it has nice chartreuse and a little bit of blue, um, and I've actually done pretty well with this one. All right, and then this guy. I actually don't know who makes this. This is a, I mean, it kind of looks like a, you know, one of these bomber A's, you know, but it's definitely not a bomber. It's like part of the bomber brand. It's kind of like, look at that eyes are all crooked and stuff, but anyway, kind of funny. Um, I got this one at like a, I don't know if it was a thrift shop or might have been like a flea market or something, And uh, but it's cool, you know, it works. Um, it dives pretty well. I'm not quite sure how deep it can dive just because I can't really find any information online about the specific bait and there's no markings on it, but it works. All right, last but not least, I'm going to my double-sided box here. And, uh, so this side is basically all spoons. I got my soft plastics that I'm throwing when I'm going on the kayak, spinner baits, uh, and inline spinners. So if I am going on my boat, this is my soft plastic bag. And I mean, it is just chock full of different baits. But if I'm going on the kayak, I don't exactly have room for this. So I'll, I'll kind of pack a bunch of soft plastics that I'm using right here. And, um, and you know, it works pretty well. It's not the best use of the space, but it's, it's okay. Um, all right, so going to my spoons. Uh, 
you know, I have a bunch of different spoons. Uh, this is one of my favorites right here. This is a crocodile spoon, uh, the brand Crocodile. And uh, it's a Lur Jensen spoon. But it works really well, and it, and it came with a nice swivel on it. And I've caught a lot of pickerel and stuff on this. And it's really fun to use if you just want to go after something different. I've caught a few bass too, but the pickerel and, and things like that really seem to go after it. I uh, have a few different, you know, smaller spoons. I got some of the regular Castmaster spoons. All right, my inline spinners. I generally, just going to undo one here. I generally don't throw inline spinners very often. Um, but I like to keep them in here because if I bring people fishing that uh, are kind of first time out or are just not that experienced, I will throw one of these on because they, they do catch fish, you know, whether it be a perch or, um, you know, even bigger bluegill or things like that and some bass. But yeah, this is the standard inline spinner. I got a bunch of them. All right, more spoons, cast masters. All right, getting into my spinner baits. So I have a bunch of different models of the spinner baits here. A lot of them Strike King, uh, and all different, you know, wire sizes too. Let's see. If I have an example. Here we go. All right. So this is my favorite style here. You can tell. See this? See how thick this is? Uh, and then compared to this one, see how thin this is. So this is my favorite. I caught a ton of fish on crankbaits just like this. I mean, sorry on a spinner base just like this and I like how thin it is it's a smaller profile and it has a more natural swim to it uh, the one negative thing about a thin wire uh, spinner bait is that it does get bent um, and then once it gets bent it can kind of tumble and things like that but you just you can kind of correct it just by looking at it make sure it's going straight and then on spinner baits I always put a trailer hook on it um, which you know I just find it really useful. I've caught tons of fish that have only really, you know, gotten stuck on the trailer hook. There we go. I really like this one. Uh, certain ponds with shad are, you know, a major food source. I like to use white and things like that. Um, same thing, trailer hooks and whatnot. This one's really good too and kind of muddy water, a nice black color, really dark. And this one has a nice swim to it. I don't know why. I mean, it's just a standard I think a Strike King, but it's just like a really solid uh, presentation when it's moving through the water. And then I got my knockoffs, and these are cool. These are from like Walmart, um, kind of a knockoff of a Strike King. They work, they're fine, but you can you can tell they start to rust pretty quickly and stuff. But um, they work, and I, I I have used them and I caught fish on them. All right, now moving to the other side of my um, double-sided tackle box here. And so this is pretty much everything else. So first of all, we have, you know, mini swim baits. Um, I like my little bluegill swim baits. Like I said, the waters I fish are just filled with bluegill. Um, so these work really well. And so then moving on this way, we got chatter baits. And chatter baits are cool, kind of a mix between a crankbait, a... Um, jig and a spinner bait really because it has a nice flash it has a nice vibration like a crankbait but it also has kind of a jig action if you want to fish it slow and i have all different colors and you know i always put you know a different soft plastic trailer on it uh and uh yeah these work pretty well you know, depending on where you're fishing uh obviously about all different sizes um but yeah i mean they're pretty fun uh, and then moving on to, let's see, jigs. Okay, so I have three um, kind of areas where I keep my jigs. Um, I have all different sizes, different colors. I generally like natural colors like this. Um, and I like a little rattle to it. Uh, I've done pretty well using that. Um, and then actually I have a video, it's a jig fishing video um, on YouTube that you can see, and I think I was using this one exactly. Uh, okay, so moving on, here's some dark blue and black jigs, uh, you know, red and black. I mean, I just have a, a pile of them, a lot of them with the um, with the rattlers. And, uh, oh, this one's cool. So this is a, a straight up football jig. I like this one, natural colors. 
And this one's great when I'm throwing around rock and stuff, like uh, deep rock. I just find that it, you know, it lands when you're throwing it down there and it really sits up here. And it really sits up and then you have your little feet are kind of, um, the little swimmers are kind of floating up. And you can bounce it along really slowly, you know, use it when it's cold water. Um, yeah, I really like this, this uh, kind of jig. And once again, I put, I like to put a little kick and trailer on it, the little, uh, you know, fake pork rind. Uh, all right, moving on. Got jerk baits. I have small jerk baits, and then I got large jerk baits. And all three of these jerk baits I got in the Lucky Tackle box. And um, it's kind of neat because they all serve different purposes, you know. I have this jerk bait, this Livingston, Livingston Lures. Uh, I think that's what it is. Yeah. And it floats, so that's why I keep it around. Um, it floats and it kind of, you know, you can kind of work the surface more, uh, you know, or close to the surface. And this is a strange one. It actually has a some kind of electronic in there that uh, it makes chirping sounds like a bait fish. And once again, I wouldn't have gone out and bought this because I bet it's really expensive, but it's cool that I got it in uh, the Lucky Tackle box. Uh, so it's kind of nice, you know. I got um, jerk baits that kind of cover the whole water column. You know, this one suspends, uh, this one floats, and this one sinks. Uh, all right, and then I got my kind of rigged up, rigged up soft plastics. Um, you know, I got my weightless yum dinger worm here. Um, oh, here's my shaky head setup. Uh, and th these are all used and a little bit beat up, but I don't like to just throw them away because I know I can either repurpose them or reuse them. Uh, kind of a net Ned rig setup. I just like to drag it along the bottom. You know, got a neg Ned rigged uh, fluke here, but. Yeah, you know, I just don't think that it's necessary to get rid of them right away. Because um, I do either use them as trailers or, um, you know, I actually can reuse them in some circumstances. All right, so now moving on to my um, big swim baits here. And I'll throw this. I don't usually throw stuff like this all the time, but I will throw it if I see, you know, big gizzard shad or other big bait fish that are swimming down there. Um, and then this guy, this is a, uh, I think it's Spro, uh, Rat, let's see, BBZ1 Rat 50, and it's kind of cool, um, it actually works, I mean it's huge, but it has a nice swimming action, and it's just, I mean, bass can't really resist it, they're at least curious when they see this swimming up top, and it's a really fun bait, really high quality, um, Really nice action, really nice uh, uh, treble hooks, and you can even switch out the color of the tail and stuff. But yeah, it's a pretty fun one. All right, so all that gear that I just showed you, all the tackle boxes actually are stored right in this uh, crate. And this is the crate that I strap to my um, kayak, and I bring it on my boat. So I strap it to the kayak just with you know basic bungee cords. Um, and uh, then it, ha it has the nice rod holders on there. Uh, what else? You know, I keep my I keep my chain stringer in here. Keep some gloves, especially now. I mean, it's just freezing out right now, so I keep my fishing gloves in here. And then keep some certain tools like uh, my Strike King uh, fish attractant and whatnot. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. Um, next time I'm probably going to go into my actual rod and reel setups, as you can see here. So I'm going to do a little, a little section on that. Alright, thanks.